Hello everyone. So this lecture is a review for those who attended the face-to-face -face session. And for those who were not able to attend, this one is specially dedicated to all of you. Okay. First, we're going to have a review of the uh, classical test theory and item analysis in general. So generally, item analysis provides a way of measuring the quality of questions. Take note of the qualifying term, quality of questions. That is, seeing how appropriate they were for the respondents and how well they measured their ability or trait. It also provides a way of reusing items over and over again in different tests with prior knowledge of how they are going to perform creating a population of questions with known properties, which we call a test bank. Uh, in the discussion we had in the face-to-face, -face, uh, ni-raise ni Sir Bebot yung concern niya sa DepEd na pinapagawa sila ng test, tapos yung classification sa TOS is easy, average, and then difficult. So mayroon doong argument na nangyari na ano ba dapat ang mauna mag gagawa ka muna ng test in order to appraise its level of difficulty or ikaw ang mag-assume kung ano ba yung item easy, average, or difficult so sa ating pinag-aralan sa classical test theory it is only when you pilot tested the item or you tried out the item that you can evaluate its level of difficulty so, pag sinabi natin na, ah, this item is easy, that is easy based on your assumption as a teacher. So, what may be easy to you may not be easy to the students. So, let us wait for the data to speak for themselves. And here's the family of the analytical tools used in item analysis. Uh, in analyzing the items, we have uh, the two uh, models. We have the classical test theory, which we discussed last time. Na yung observed score na nakikita sa bata is not actually the actual score of the student because that particular observed score has an error in it. And the greater the error, the smaller is the true score. And the error is used to estimate how far does the true score revolves around the observed score. Yun ang ating classical test theory na tinatawag din natin na the true score theory. Kasi nga, yung true score ng bata ay may confidence interval. It is found between the lower boundary and the upper boundary of the confidence interval. And then, we have this uh, latent trait models. Pag sinabi natin latent, yung hindi masyadong nakikita, hindi masyadong obvious so, itong mga model na ito, uh, they look at the score not as a true and error score, but because of the traits that produce the performance. And usually, what is being considered is the way the students respond to the items. That's why we have the item response theory, kung saan marami ang kinoconsider doon na mga parameters. We have one parameter, we have two parameter IRT, three parameter IRT, and so on and so forth. And then, one of the uh, most successful models in uh, item analysis that is being used by many researchers today is the RASH model. Uh, the RASH model is uh, distinct from item response theory in philosophy, but the way they the way it is being computed is similar to the one parameter item response theory. So let's uh, review the classical test theory. Classical test theory analysis are the easiest and most widely used form of analysis. So the statistics can be computed by readily available statistical packages or even by 
hand. So, sa ating experience, ginamit natin yung Excel at saka yung SPSS to compute uh, those different indices. Classical analysis are also performed on the test as a whole. So, medyo holistic siya rather than on the item. Pero yung ating index of difficulty at saka index of discrimination, they are actually item statistics. So, we generated them. But, they only apply to that group of students on that collection of items. That means that they are dependent on the respondents or dependent on the samples. They apply only to that group of students on that collection of items. So, if we are going to administer that test into a different group of students, even if we're going to use the same uh, number of items or types of items, we might arrive at a different results. But if we apply it to uh, students or a group of students with similar characteristics at, uh, of, of those students whom uh, we pre-tested it, then there's a possibility that uh, the findings will be similar. So this is what we discussed uh, last week, that CTT is based on the true score model, where X is the observable score and T is the true score and E is the error score. So that always means that the observed score is the combination of the true score and the error score. And then the true score is being estimated uh, depending on the amount of error score. In CTT, we assume that the error is normally distributed. That means that all the respondents are exposed to the same error, uncorrelated with true score. So they are not dependent on the true score and it has a mean of zero. And these are the statistics that are associated with the classical test theory. Uh, first, we have the difficulty, which is uh, a statistics at the item level. And then we have the discrimination index, which is also a statistic that is also at the item level because we identify the different items that can discriminate between the proficient and the less proficient students. And then we have the reliability, which is the test a level statistic. So it is not item level because in reliability, uh, we usually, like, like for example, we used the Cronbox Alpha, uh, we usually get the reliability, not of the individual item, but the whole of the test, considering all the items that make up the test. That's why we have the Cronbox Alpha for the uh, internal consistency of the items. Ibig sabihin, yung mga items ba are consistent with the constructs, with the variable, or with the latent trait or characteristic that they measure. Now, let us compare and contrast between the classical test theory and the latent trait models. Uh, sa classical uh, analysis, it has the test and not the item as its basis. So, it's because you're counting the score, so it's about the test. Although the statistics generated are often generalized to similar students taking a similar test, yun nga, they only really apply to those students taking that test. Test. So, the generalization is limited. Dapat yung nag-take lang ay yung mga estudyante na may commonality or may common characteristics. Like for example, lahat ng grade 4 na magte-take ng test. Whereas, the latent trait model aims to look beyond at the underlying traits which are producing the test performance. So, ang tanong, ito yung performance. So, the latent trait model looks at the factors that are responsible for that particular performance. They are measured at item level. So, the performance is measured based on the item level. So, we are checking whether the item is difficult and then or easy and provide sample-free measurement. How about the latent trait models? Uh, latent trait models have been around since the 1940s but were not widely used until the 1960s. Although that time, it was already theoretically possible, it was practically unfeasible to use. Why? Because there were no specialized softwares to do the computation. 
Latent trait models aim to measure the underlying ability, or what we call the trait, which is producing the test performance rather than measuring the performance per se. So it's not about the score, but it's about what are the factors that generate or contribute to the production of that particular test performance or score. So this leads them to being sample free because you are interested on the different factors or the underlying factors or ability that produce that performance. So you don't care about the number of samples. As the statistics are not dependent on the test situation which generated them, they can be used more flexibly. Uh, item response theory uh, falls under the umbrella of the uh, latent trait model. And this refers to a family of latent trait models used to establish psychometric properties of items and scales. Actually, the item response theory refers to the modern psychometrics because in several education assessment, large-scale testing programs, and professional testing firms, item response theory has almost completely replaced CTT as method of choice. So actually, in... Uh, the journal articles that I read and based also on uh, some dialogues with the scholars in the field, they, they told us that the reason why many Filipinos are not actually successful in publishing their work is because on the problem of instrumentation or measurement. Because many journal articles today are uh, prioritizing or they, they, they prefer instruments that have been developed using the IRT model and not the CTT. Uh, item response theory are assessment methods that take both person and item attributes into account. So take note of those two important latent traits. You consider the person, particularly the proficiency of the person or the ability of the person, okay, and then you have the item whether the item is difficult or not. So this combination of two latent traits are said to be responsible in the production of scores or are being taken into account in the IRT model. IRT has many advantages over CTT that have brought IRT into more frequent use. So in the journal article in the CEB, which uh, is one of your readings, uh, you can go over the several advantages of IRT over CTT. And now, we have to differentiate between these two important measures. We have the IRT versus the RASH. Uh, IRT and RASH are similar in computation, but they differ greatly in the philosophical foundation. IRT leans towards the fitness. So IRT wants to fit the model to the data. Uh, once you have already developed the model, so you have a data, so you have to fit the model to the data. That's why it describes uh, it is descriptive because it, it describes whether uh, the model fit to the data. Whereas, rush measure inclines to simplicity. We fit the data into the model. So we already have the data, and then we fit whether this data fit into the model or it's a misfit into the model. And it's very parsimonious. Uh, when we say parsimonious, it's very simple. The pag sinabi nating pars, 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 law of parsimony, the simplest explanation to a certain phenomenon is the most acceptable. So that's why it is prescriptive because you prescribe whether the data fits the model or not. So IRT might use up to three parameters. That's why we have the so-called one-parameter model, two-parameter IRT, and then three-parameter IRT, which we're going to discuss later. Whereas RASH stays with only one parameter.